All right, so we're going to get started with uh, 229 today, moving right along. Um, thanks to those of you that decided to show up today. It's usually about 50%. And uh, if you discount the people that are hanging out from last class, uh, we probably are right at about that. Um, so anyway, but we only have so many days left in the semester, so we have to keep going. So today we're going to do essentially very similar to what we did last class with the elevation view. Um, only this time we'll take it one step further because we're going to cut a plan view of our building. Um, so that involves actually cutting a, a section. And so we did the section stuff a couple lectures ago. We'll revisit all of that again today. But we're going to cut the plan view, not the section view. Uh, and then next class, when you guys get back after Thanksgiving, um, we're going to cut a, a true section view. So the, this is a lot of repetition. We'll be going through the same sorts of things. But these are the primary line drawings that we're going to be getting out of Rhino. So it's important to get that plan view out. So I'm going to go ahead and get started with my master site file. It's the same one that I start everyone with. It has all of my lighting and everything installed in it. But I'm going to do a save as, because this time I'm cutting through my building. I'm going to explode blocks. It's going to be a mess. So we want to make sure that we do a save as. So I'll go to File and then Save As. And this time, it's going to be Plan. And I'll go ahead and click Save. Perfect. So now that's saved, I'm not going to accidentally screw up my original file, which is good. Uh, now I have to start thinking about where I'm going to cut my plan in my building. And so a lot of you have two-story buildings like mine. I'm only asking for one plan view. So you have to figure out which floor to cut the plan view of uh, and what looks most appropriate. In my, in my particular building, uh, I have kind of a, a step. I have my lower floor with my stairs, and then I have my mid floor, and then we go back up to the top floor. So it's, it's a hard one to decide where to cut it. Uh, typically, you would cut it four feet above floor height because that's where our standard floor uh, plan view is cut. In my case, I may cut it a little bit higher to get this room and the downstairs room over here. Uh, or I could cut it higher still and get the outside deck and through this view. So mine's not going to be quite as traditional as I would like. Um, so when I start to set this up, first thing that I want to do, just like we did when we cut the section, is I want to create a really large plane that I can set where that that view needs to be. So let me zoom out. And I'm going to create a plane that's bigger than everything in my scene. So we'll make sure it's bigger than everything else. There it is. And then I'll move into the side view here. And I'll start to control where that plane cuts through my building from the side view. So we'll pull it up a little bit there. I'll keep pulling it up. And like I said before, typically it would be four feet off the floor. So it would be here. But I'd rather include part of this room over here as part of my floor plan. So it, because they're split levels, I'm going to do it a little bit short on this floor and a little bit high on that floor. But it's going to give me a better view uh, of the overall plan. So now that I have that set up in my view here, we can come down and have a look at it. Yep, it's cutting through my building approximately where I thought it would be cutting. That's a, that's a good plan. And I can use my section tools plugin to view this temporarily, just like we did in the section. So I can see, does this look right? So let me do a section tools command. I'm going to create the section. So st create, or I can go to section tools create. Select objects to section. It's going to be all, except I'm going to hold down control and deselect that plane, because I don't want that in there. So I'm going to section all of this. I'll press Enter. Now, when, I get, when it comes to my direction, I'm going to leave it at x-axis, but I'm not going to be able to pick it from this perspective view. I'm going to have to switch views. And I'll show you that in just a second. Uh, the rest of these are fine, but I do want my solid mode to be set to surfaces, which it is by default. I'll press Enter to accept. Now, in this view, my section is going sideways, like a traditional section would be. But if I switch into the side view, notice that now the section's pointing down. So I'm going to do the section in the side view. I'll snap to the midpoint of my surface right here. And now it'll be pointing down. If I zoom back out, we can see that there it is, ST00 pointing down. I'll hit Enter. 
and it then cuts a section right there and hopefully fills in some of my walls for me. No guarantees that it'll do that, but hopefully it will. So now I can go to the section tools command and I can say section tools view or st view. I'm going to show it in this pool 01 view. Oops. Sorry, I had, to, I had to pick the section first. Now I can say pool 01. And there it is, having cut through my building. I'm still showing that big plane, so I really should create another sublayer here called uh, section 00 plane. And that will let me take this, that big surface, sorry, yep, this one, change object layer, and I can turn it off just so we can see this a little bit better. Oops. Thought I did. Let me try that one more time. Somehow I'm getting a an artifacted piece there. Uh, let's try ST clear all views. And let me try it one more time. Why am I getting that funny surface there? That's weird. Ah, I know what I'm doing. So on the uh, ST00, when I cut the section, it actually filled in the ocean with a big disk because it, it cut through the ocean. That's why I had that extra disk. Let me get rid of that. I don't need it. Now we'll go back to section tools, view, ST00 in pool 01. There we go. Now we can look down on our building and say, did it actually cut through where I wanted it to cut through as part of the building? Yeah, it did. It did a pretty decent job. Did it fill in all of the walls? No, unfortunately. So I'm going to need to fill in those walls long term so that they show up solid. So I'm going to add another layer down at the bottom here. And we'll call this wall fill. I'll make it my current layer. And then I'll go ahead and fill in these walls, just like I did last time. And I know this is not the most exciting thing for you guys to have to watch me do, but at the same time, it is important for this final render to have these. So bear with me. Couple more. Will it render without It will render without them, but you'll have some weird shadowing that will happen um, on the walls. So I don't really recommend it, but technically speaking, it would render without them. Again, I apologize that you guys have to sit here and watch me do this, but there's no real way around it. All right, so now all of those are filled in. That's where I cut through my building, which is perfect. I have those set up. So now it's a matter of starting to set up the view that I want to do. So first off, I need to be probably in the top view, and I need to make sure that I'm not in perspective. So right now I'm in perspective, so that doesn't work. If I switch my view into the top, so if I go to set view and then top, I'm looking down on it. Now it looks the way it should, okay? which is a good sign. So at this point, 
now that I have my top view set up, I want to make sure that I save this as a view so I can go back to it. So I'll go to my named view, set view, and then named views. And I'm going to save this one as plan 01. Actually, I'll call it 00 so it ties with the section. And so now I can return to that plan view over and over again as I, as I start to do it. So I'm going to leave this plan view open for a second and start to look at some of the other views. Let me switch this view into perspective. So I'll go to set view into perspective here so we can look down on my object. And then in the plan 00, I'm going to show my camera. So I did this same as last time, where I'm going to go in and show camera. And I get the view of this plan 00. There it is. We can see the little camera. It's kind of weird. I was expecting it to be a little bit taller as a camera, but it still should work out fine. And remember, I want to draw that rectangle that we did last time. So it's going to be a rectangle. And I'm going to do this three points. So I can go from that point to that point, and then to that point. I can then scale this by 2 to get the full size of the rectangle. We see the rectangle showing up here in the plan view. I'll do scale. It's a regular scale, not a 1D, from this corner by 2. So my scale factor is 2. I'll hit Enter. Now it's the full size. And that matches up perfectly with the plan 00 view. We can see a faint little yellow line around that, which is what we should have. So now that I have that set up for this particular view, I'm going to move back to the plan 00 view. There it is. And I'm going to do that make 2D command, which is what we did last time in the elevation. I'm going to do it again in the plan view. Because it's shown here as a section, there's no problem doing the uh, plan view or the line drawings from this view. I don't have the contours, however, and so I may or may not want the contours. The other thing that you'll notice is the upper part of this slope is all cut off. So I'm not going to get that upper part of the hill. And so long term, we're going to have to deal with that. I'm going to skip it for right now. I'm actually going to skip all of the contours and come back and add those later um, if I have time. I'm going to start with just this. Uh, the other thing is I have a piece of my drawing not showing up. I need to turn the bunch. I thought it was on the bunch grass layer. Hmm. Well, I'm missing this particular section, so that may become a problem. I might have to do some retouching. Uh, a little bit later on. I swear that was there. Huh. All right, well, anyway. Let me go ahead and go to File. Or excuse me. I'll go ahead and type Make 2D. Make 2D. Select Objects to Draw. It should be All. I don't want to draw the bunch grass, though. So I'll type All followed by Enter. I should get everything, including that rectangle, which isn't quite right. I can see it right there. I shouldn't be able to see it. So let me go back to set view, plan 00. No. Interesting. I'm wondering why I'm seeing that. Switch into this. Yep. No, it looks the same. I don't know why I'm seeing the artifact. I shouldn't be seeing it. So plan 00, zero make 2D, all. There we go. I'll hit Enter. Now, these are the make 2D options. We went through these last time, last class. I'm going to do the current view, which is plan 00. zero. I'm going to maintain my source layers. I'm going to show my hidden lines. They're all going to show up on these layers. And I'll go ahead and say OK. So remember, this process can take a while. There we go. Now, if I look at this in the top view, so let me go to Set View, Top. There is my plan view of my building. Perfect. That's what I was after. But I can trim off the excess. So I'll use this rectangle to do a trim. And we'll get rid of the extra pieces there and there. And all of this other stuff I don't need, so that can all go away. This is what I'm going to bring into Illustrator. So let me go ahead and type Move. 
Remember, I have to move it to 0, 0,0, 0, 0. So the origin before I do the export. I'll zoom selected. There it is. Now I can go ahead and I can export this. So I'll go to File, Export Selected. It's going to be a Adobe Illustrator, a .ai file. I'm going to click on my options. And we have the ability to, to export this at scale. So I'm going to do it at a quarter inch equals a foot. So in that, it's going to be 48 inches is equal to 1 inch. You have to do a little bit of math. You can figure it out. Okay. I'll go ahead and say OK. I'll go ahead and give this a name. Let me put it in its pro appropriate folder here. There we go. Plan view. Say plan zero zero lines. Perfect. I'll click save. Again, it gives me the option to change the scale should I want to. I'm going to go with it. And now it's written that AI file. I can then open up that AI file in Adobe Illustrator. So let me open up Illustrator. And I'll go to File, and then Open. And we're going to jump into today's folder. And there's my Plan 00. So just like last time, not all of it is included in my artboard. So the first thing that I'll do is adjust my artboard. By the way, I should point out, just like with the last one, this is written out step by step. So everything that I've done is here. So you can go back through with lots of images. So if you get a little lost, it's all there for backup. So first thing I'll do is edit the artboard. I'll click on the artboard tool, which looks like a little crop sign. And I'll make sure that this matches up with my view. Like that. I'll go back to my direct select, my, my black arrow here. Or excuse me, my regular select. And I may need to do some corrections. So I was suspecting that there would be some corrections, like this piece of ground should actually be cut off. Likewise, this should really go away, because that doesn't exist. These pieces under here probably need to go away. That probably goes away. Actually, all of this can go away. Now, remember also that there are some hidden lines that are, that are in here. And that may or may not be relevant, depending on what I'm doing. And I can choose to organize my layers a little bit. So the layer stack is messy, just like it was before. I'll create a layer for visible and another layer for hidden. And then anything that is visible, I'll go through and I'll select all of those visibles. And all of those visibles are going to go on the visible layer. There we go. Then I could take the hiddens. It's a lot easier once you get down to just the hiddens. And I'll put those on the hidden layer. Starting to be a little bit cleaner. I can then select everything on the hidden layer by clicking right over there. That little box will select everything. And I can change the color. They shouldn't be white. They should be some kind of a gray. So let me change to a gray. Let me change their weight. I'll go over to Stroke. If you're not seeing all of these options, if it looks like this, click that little fly out menu. It's the triangle with the four lines. And say Show Options. Then you'll get all of those. These should be thinner, so 0.25. And I'm going to make them dash, just like I did last class. So 2, 1. And I should then be able to see that there are a few hidden lines. 
there's some of my hidden lines that are in there, those dashed lines. They may or may not be relevant in a plan view. Generally, it's not as important as a section view or an elevation view to have the hidden lines. So you may decide to just turn them off long term. That, that's certainly a viable option. Some of my other lines aren't exactly as thick as I would like. So for example, the, the lines that represent my walls probably need to be a little bit thicker. If I went in to my layers, I could actually select my walls. There's my exterior walls. Let's select them. Might be those two. I can change from purple. They showed up as purple. I want them to be black. And I could also say that those need to be a little bit thicker. So maybe I'll do them at two point, for example. And they should thicken up a bit like that. And they're starting to read a little bit better that way. Same thing with the red. Now, I could also, instead of just doing it this way, I could go up to the Select menu and say Select Same Stroke Color, which would select all the red lines. That's just another option. It's available to you. So in that case, I'll do that. And we'll upload those. We'll change those to two point. And we'll change those to black. And now those have turned out to be black as well. So they're starting to read a little bit stronger. There's some artifacts. Like that little piece probably needs to go away. My windows are reading OK. Though if we zoom in here a bit, these probably need to be a lot thinner. So let me go and change those to be maybe 0.25. And maybe this one needs to be 0.25 because they're part of the windows. Maybe that one needs to be 0.25. So we're just softening those up a little bit. Maybe these need to be a little bit thicker. So I could select that and say that should really be two point because it's part of the wall, etc. This line here maybe doesn't really need to be the thicker line. Maybe that should be a little bit thinner too. Maybe that should only be one point. And then this should be two point. So you could see where you could spend some time really fine tuning what's happening in these uh, various layers. But that's part of how you're going to get a good high quality floor plan. It's just going to take a little bit of work. Um, think about how much you work you save from not having to draw it. So spending a little bit of time fine tuning this is not the end of the world. So there's all, uh, you know, I thicken those up just a little bit. If I press Control-0, we can start to see that as a floor plan. In some cases, you may find that you want to fill in the walls with something. Remember, that's an option. If you were going to do that, you probably want to do a duplicate of all the layers so that you can do a live paint and fill those in. I'm not going to do it at this point because I don't want to spend too much time going into too much Illustrator. But if you remember back to 135, that was one of the things that we talked about being able to do is live, live paint. Sorry. Um, maybe I'll convince you to take 135, right? There you go. OK, so now that I've done the line drawing part, I'd also like the clay rendering part. So this is where we can get some really big advantages uh, in Rhino over things like SketchUp. But it takes a little bit of work on our part to do it. So just like with that section view, remember I used that see-through material that was transparent, but let the light shine. It blocked the, uh, it blocked the light, but let us view through it. It was kind of a, a hybrid material. I'm going to do the same thing in my view. So we'll leave Plan 00 up over here, because ultimately that's the one I'm going to be exporting. And I'm going to work in the perspective view once again. So let me turn back on that giant plane. And I'm going to turn all the Make 2D stuff off. We don't need that. I'm going to turn on that big plane. Let me view this in shaded mode so you can see it a little again. And I'm going to do that massive split. So before I do the split, I want to explode all my blocks. Remember, this is very destructive. So that's why I have a copied file. So let me SEL block instance to select the available block instances. I'll type explode. And my, you see my layer stack go nuts because I'm getting all this extra baggage. I'm going to type SEL block instance again because chances are I have nested blocks. So I have to get into the next layer. And I'll type explode. Then I'll type SEL block instance again, because there might be more. There's still eight. Explode. SEL block instance. A few more. Explode. 
SEL block instance. You see I keep doing it until I get the, the return, no objects added to selection. So I hit escape to deselect SEL block instance. And eventually you'll run out of things to explode, which is the idea. Now I can do that big, big split that I was talking about. So I'll take, I'll go ahead and just type split. It's going to say select objects to split. It's going to be all except for that big plane. I'll go ahead and hit enter. Cutting object will be that big plane. And I'll hit enter. And remember, this can take a while. And not all of the splits are going to succeed. Most of them will. But sometimes an object is completely outside of our uh, split plane, so it's not going to split. Sometimes the objects are lights, and lights aren't going to split either. So it's OK that some of them say split failed. So this takes a while. OK, so my split finished. So I'm going to switch into one of my side views. So here I am in my right side view. And I can take a look at how did, how did this split work. Well, it did a pretty good job as I go into the selection to see that, yes, almost everything did the split. Let me make this big for just a second. And let me do my selection a little bit more carefully, all the way down to right there. Yes, it, it did pretty much everything exactly as I wanted it to, like that. So everything above in this needs to be that see-through material. And so I have to actually apply that see-through material, except for places where there's glass. And this assumes, and I, I made a little note. Oh, by the way, you guys don't get handouts today because the people that work the copy center didn't decide to show up this morning. I guess they wanted to go on vacation early. They may be there by now, but they weren't there when I went. So anyway, you don't get copies. You'll have to look at the online version. Anyway, but I did make a note on here that there, there really are two ways of doing this. Uh, one way of doing this, you could just hide everything on top and do the rendering. I don't particularly like that because I like to be able to see how the sun penetrates the building. I think it's a valuable part of the rendering. So I'm going to make everything except for the glass see-through. So what I'll do is I'll look over here in my layer stack. And with all of this selected, anywhere that I see glass, I'm going to turn off. So glass railing, glass windows, window glass. Those are all going to turn off, which is going to take them out of my selection. I can then go into my V-Ray materials. And I don't know if I have see-through loaded. Looks like I don't, so I'm going to load in see-through. Maybe. Load material. It's going to be in my resources under special materials, see-through. And we'll go ahead and open that. Now I will right-click on see-through here. And I'm going to apply material to selection. Remember, I'm overriding all the materials with the see-through material. So now that has see-through on it. I'll deselect everything. And I'm going to, as I turn these, gla these glass layers back on, I'm going to select the objects that are on that layer. Then I'll move up to my next glass. I'll right click and say select objects. Now I get that glass. I'll come up to my glass railing, which is my last piece of glass. I'll right click and I'll say select objects. That means I have all of my glass selected. But anything below this split line, I want to deselect. So I'll hold down Control and we'll deselect everything below that line. Now I need just plain transparent material. I don't want glass anymore. I just want plain transparent. So I'll just create that. I'll right click on Scene Materials. I'll say Create Material Standard. I'm going to change my diffuse transparency value to white, which makes it perfectly transparent. And I'm going to rename it to be transparent. Now that that's renamed, I will right click and say Apply Material to selection. So now all of the glass that's above 
is just going to be completely transparent. So the light's going to be able to shine through it. So I have solid objects with see-through material applied, and I have the glass with completely transparent material applied. So at this point, if I went back to my top, excuse me, my plan view, and I were to try to render, I can turn off that big split plane again. Hold on a second. There you go. And I were to render this view, it would certainly, it, it would render, but it would render in full color, which again isn't kind of my intent as part of this uh, assignment. I, I would actually rather have uh, kind of a clay rendering. And the problem with loading the clay render visopt file, like I did last time, um, or overriding your materials with a gray color, is that all of your materials, including your see-through that I just went through and did, are going to be overridden. So in this sense, instead of doing the rendering at this point, I'm going to do the opposite down below here. So right here, I'm going to select everything. Let me go from the bottom here up to that nice little split line. There it is, except for the glass. So once again, I'll turn off the glass railing, I'll turn off the window glass, and I'll turn off this window glass, like that. So I'm down to everything else is selected. I'll go back to my V-Ray materials, and I'm going to make just a plain gray material. So I'll right click and say, Create Material Standard. And this time, it's probably kind of a light gray-ish. We can vary this color. If I preview it, it looks like kind of a light clay material. Let me rename this, and we can call this uh, light gray gray. And I'll say OK. I'm going to right click and say apply material to selection. That means everything that's below is getting that applied. I'm going to deselect. I'm going to go back to my window glass, select it. I'll go back up to my window glass here and select it. And I'll go back up to the top here, glass railing, and select it. Now, as I think about this glass, let me select objects here. In reality, doing a clay rendering and having a little glass is probably OK. So do I really need to change it? Probably not. I could probably just leave it as glass. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and leave it. So everything on the bottom is now set up with that um, the uh, can't think lost my train of thought with the with the plain gray clay material everything on top is the see-through my glass on top is transparent I'm ready to do my rendering so that's good so let me switch into the plan view I'm going to ST clear all views so I'm not seeing it anymore now here's one other thing this piece of ground up top currently has see-through material applied to it but maybe I do want to render the ground because it would make sense to have the ground rendered. So I'm going to go ahead and change that one material to that light gray. So I'll go back to my V-Ray material editor, and I'm going to apply light gray to that selection. It's really bugging me that I don't have that piece of terrain. Um, oh, this probably should be the light gray as well, right there. Go into my uh, V-Ray materials, apply material to selection. And I don't understand why that bunch grass should have, should have had it. Ah, show. I had it hidden. So let me take this and apply that to the same light gray material. Apply material to selection. OK, so now when I go to do the render, I should only have that light gray material. That should only be the only thing showing. But the see-through is going to let me see through. I probably should have made adjustments to the actual section cut materials as well. We'll see how they turn out. They're probably set as default right now. Let's go ahead and do that next rendering. So I'll go up to V-Ray. Let me go into my V-Ray options real quick and make sure I get the exact same output. Get my view aspect. Lock it. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'll do a small rendering first just to see how it turns out. 
go and render and see if I did it correctly. So you can see here that when I do the rendering of this, a couple things are happening. One, all the sun that's passing through my building is actually showing up because I did the full heights of the windows. It's not being clipped, uh, which is an important part of this rendering. It does, however, appear a little bit darker than I would have liked. So before I do the final version of this, I may go back into my uh, V-Ray options, which are open. Let me go into camera and let me change that so that it's not quite so dark. Let me lighten it up. Uh, let's try 200 and take a look. And this is always going to take a few trial runs till you get the clay to look the way you want it to, because we don't want it to be overpowering. We don't want the shadows to overshadow the lines. It's still a line drawing. We just want a little bit of sense of what's happening in here. So it's definitely better. It still maybe could use a little bit lighter. So let me go back one more time, and I'll change this down to maybe 125. And I might also bump up the size. So we'll say maybe a little bit larger, and we'll do the render. So this one's going to take a little bit of time. So I'll pause the recording for a bit, and then when it's done rendering, I'll come back and show you the final piece it all together. So bear with me for just a second. OK, so it, it, did, it finished its rendering. I had a little bit of trouble getting it started, but essentially we got there. And this is a, approximately what we're looking at. It's still probably a little bit dark inside. Uh, and maybe I'd end up doing a couple different renders so that the inside wasn't so, so dark. Uh, maybe I need to double check my lights and make sure my lights are on and not off so that I'm, I'm doing a little bit of artificial illumination. Anyway, some combination uh, might get me there. Anyway. So once I have this image, I'm going to save all of my um, channels. So they're all saved now. I already did that. And then I'll go back to Illustrator, where I have the line drawing. And I'm going to go to File, and then Place. And I'm going to drop in the clay. And it should just be the plain clay version, like that. Let me press Control minus to zoom out a little bit. Now remember, this is supposed to be the same size as my frame, assuming that I set it up and I did all the renderings the same way. So I should be able to just adjust the size of this image. I'm holding down Shift to keep it in proportion so that it matches up with my drawing. And it looks pretty close. Sometimes you have trouble getting those exactly on each other. At that point, it might be easier to just drag, even though it's not in proportion. I'm not holding Shift so that each side matches up because it'll snap in that context. So let me move that over, adjust this one like that. I'll come down here and adjust this one there. So now everything lines up or is supposed to line up exactly correct, which is what I'm after. Uh, and this is, this is good, because I'm getting a little sense of what's happening inside the building, et cetera. Looks like maybe it needs to, no? Somehow that doesn't quite line up. But anyway, so at this point, I also have to decide, is this too overpowering for my drawing, or does it have enough or too little, et cetera? So you may find that you want to go to the Opacity menu here, and you might want to adjust that opacity down a little bit, maybe so it's not quite so strong. And so it's a pretty easy adjustment to make in Illustrator after the fact. So we just tone that down to let the line drawing really live. And it's not, it's, so that way it's not too much uh, or too distracting. So at this point, you essentially have your combined floor plan drawing. We could take it a step further. We could put a grunge texture in the background. We could do a lot more to this. But this is kind of the bare minimum of what we're after. It would be nice maybe if I filled in where the walls were just so that they ended up being a little bit thicker. Um, they might read a little bit better in contrast to where the shadows are. But this is what your, your target is. Okay, 
Um, in terms of grunge texture, I could take that a little bit further if I wanted to. I could drop uh, something in behind. For example, I'll just show you this because we have a little bit of time to do that. I could go to File and then Place, and I could bring in some kind of a background texture. Get into my Resources folder. Make this a little bit bigger. Make that a little bit bigger. I want it to go behind my other drawings, but I also want this to not have a normal blending mode. We'll go through and either do an overlay or something. Probably an overlay is good because now you can see Control Zero. Let me zoom in a little bit. You can see that there's a little bit of that texture shining through inside of my drawing. Something like that might add a little bit to it. It adds a little bit more variant to the shadows. We could convert that image into black and white if we didn't like it. That would involve going into Photoshop, converting to black and white, and then using it that way. Um, we could also potentially, um, I don't know, add an ink spot. I mean, there's a lot of things that we could do. But I don't want to get too far. I mean, it's kind of a hybrid of 135 and 136 at this point. So the, the important thing for you guys to take away today is the making the plan view and being able to get the line drawing and the clay rendering out. That's really what it's about. Next class, we'll do section, which is essentially exactly the same thing that I did today. The only difference is which direction we're cutting. So instead of cutting horizontally, we'll cut vertically through the building. But it's getting the same, the same thing. Are there any questions about this? No? OK, I'll let you guys work. If you have questions, obviously let me know, and we'll go from there.